everyone, and welcome to the review episode for The Wayward Dragons. If we sound a little weird, it's because we're actually recording in the same place for once. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time in, what, seven years that we've been in the same room? Yeah. <laughs> Kelsey's getting a hitch tomorrow, so, uh... Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> Oh, gosh. So let's let's review your emotions. Let's start with that. <laughs> oh God! How are you feeling? Oh, I am. I'm excited. I'm very excited to finally marry my other half. But at the same time, it's very stressful. It's very overwhelming. Um, constant contact with people. This is not my jam. <laughs> <laughs> and also being the center of attention when you're introverted you don't like being the center of attention in this way and it's like having to be the center of attention it's like well this is fucking weird yeah your brother and i were cracking jokes earlier about how uh it's funny that neither one of you like to be the center of attention but you've got your own special table right in front of everyone (laughs) so we can all stare at you while you eat well we didn't want because the wedding party is the family right like, so we're just like, we didn't want it to be weird because mm-hmm. it's like, well, my brother's my, like, maid of honor type in a way. So, like... There's another term for that, like a that, sort of person of honor. I just call him my best person. That's what yeah, I've been saying. I feel like there's a, um, there's an actual term. title, but I don't... I'm not positive in that. I don't know. Words change all the time. Yeah. So, like, we just didn't want... Because everyone's part of the family anyway. Yeah. So, we're like, well, everyone would just sit with family. So, we didn't want his sister to be away from her son and her husband and stuff. So, like, that's one of the reasons why we did that. It was a sweetheart table. We just wanted to eat by ourselves. So, I, I think it's a great idea, personally. <laughs> like, it just makes more sense. Like, I've been in the wedding where I can't sit with my other half to eat and so it's just like well this is weird yeah especially when like you're the only other person i know Mm -hmm. so that's one of the reasons why we did that of like everyone can just kind of sit with everybody whoever it doesn't really matter to me type thing yeah oh yeah cool yeah 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 well you said since you're already talking let's start with you with the book reviews (laughs) i've only read one through all this do you know how many i've had one. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just... So I finished um, Resurrection Bay by Emma Viskic? Viskic? V-I-S-K-I-C. So it takes place... Yeah. I would... Viskic? Viskic? I guess. I don't know. I have no idea. Like, this kick, I would say. Yeah. So, it it obviously takes place in Australia. And he is deaf. So, part of the book is, is him trying not to ask for help because he's deaf. Because he needs you to, like, talk at him. My dad's this way. He needs you to talk at him. Um... But he walks into his best friend being murdered, and his best friend was helping him with a insurance case where these warehouses were getting robbed, and it kind of felt like an inside job. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things. He's he's a dick. Apollo's sitting on our table because we're recording on my dining room table. Um, he's okay. You can get to me. Um, but, yeah. So it follows the their first case. His ex-wife's involved. There's betrayal, obviously. And it kind of comes... You kind of see it coming. I kind of did. Because of just how the character was written. He's got a partner. He runs a um, private investigation type company. And his partner is not who she says she is. So that's where it gets kind of weird, but it's a part of a series. I don't know if I'm going to finish the series. I don't know. And then the book I'm working on is Ink and Bone. 
Hmm. So it's <coughs> it's also part of a series, but you can read them all out of order. So she's a medium, and she's trying to come to terms with her powers, and she's got to move in with her mom or her grandma or something. So that's that one. What about you? What'd you what did you read? So I finished uh, The Hidden Palace, which is the second book in the, I guess, the what do you gyms. call it when there's, yeah, what do you call it when there's only two books? Duology? Is it a duology? I guess that would make sense. I thought that's what that was called, was a duology. Yeah, I think that's the right word. But yeah, so it's a duology. Uh, it's the second book in the Golem and the Jinn series uh, by Helen Wecker. Okay. Uh, it's mm-hmm. honestly it was better than the first one. Okay. The, the first one lacked a bit of substance until like the very end. It most of the first book, it's like I said before, it seemed like it was the setup to like the last few chapters. And while you know technically that's the case in most books, you still have other stuff going on. It was yeah. like, but you know the this had similar feel, but you could tell that basically the first book was written to set up the second book. Okay, it was, it's something like that. Yeah. Um, okay. So it was it was better. There's, you know, more gen in it. There's another golem. There's Okay. A lot more intricate story going on. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best series, but I wouldn't rate it as horrible. Kind of somewhere in between. If you if you have nothing else to read, I say read it. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's always looked interesting. Yeah, I mean it's it's not a bad series. It's I can see why it's enjoyable to some people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just I wouldn't put it in my top ten list of book series. Okay. Then again, <laughs> I've, I've, I've read a lot of book series. So. I know. I know, uh, for you to be like, mm, yeah, this is a solid no. <laughs> yeah, well, I, mean, I wouldn't say it's a solid no. I'm just saying that it's enjoyable, but I wouldn't put it in the top. Top ten. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So, yeah, as far as... Have you watched anything? I did. <laughs> What's the name of that show? We've been watching Roswell, New Mexico. Yeah, so that's, Zach and I were talking about that. So it's a, uh, a remake of a series that yeah! I watched back, and like it was on, it started in 99, I had to look it up yesterday we were talking <laughs> about it. It was a 99 to 2001, the first season ran on WB, for those yeah. who remember that, and the second season ran on UPN, for the, like the six other people in the world that remember <laughs> that UPN was a thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, the the first you know, the original series was enjoyable, uh, but the remake from what he was telling me, I don't think I would like it. It's interesting, but you can tell it was made for CW. Yeah. You can totally tell that that's the network that made it. Well, it's it's funny because uh, you know WB became CW. Yeah. Uh, so the original show started on WB. And then moved to UPN. Uh, why a lot of people don't remember UPN is UPN in 2002, I think it was, was actually acquisitioned by Warner Brothers and by WB. So they bought the entire, yeah, like all the stuff back that they had sold to them. But yeah, from what I was looking at, I mean, it's super cheesy, super cheesy. You, you should see the. Like, once I figured out it was on CW, I was like, oh, this acting makes a whole lot of sense. As someone like, who's a fan of shitty teen dramas, trust me, I, I get it. Oh, uh, yeah. You, you can know, tell they're soap opera stars, I'm, for, for sure. I'm not ashamed to admit that I've <laughs> seen all, but I think the last season of, or maybe last two seasons of Riverdale. Okay. So, uh, you know, I can, I can appreciate shitty teen drama for what it is but from just from what uh, Zach was telling me I don't I don't know if I would enjoy it just because of the differences in the story from the original 
Yeah. Because it's like, I can, I can deal with a remake. Yeah. But... It has to be tasteful. Yeah, and sometimes the remake is better than the original. Yeah. Uh, there's been plenty of cases of that. But, I don't know. It's, it's not bad. Uh, That's what we've been watching. And then, I was on Facebook the other day, and... <laughs> saw this article so it says neighbor calls neighbor calls for controversial Halloween display to be removed so I'm going to read this article it's on 10 TV from where I'm from and so this takes place in Louisiana Vic some resident he, he creates like super elaborate Halloween display every year mm-hmm. and um, he comments at we have a little religious theme here. We wanted to make sure people were scared, but to also make them a little uncomfortable, which I thought was kind of interesting. Of like, Well, isn't that the whole, like, of course, there's those of us that see Halloween and Samhain as a holy day, but isn't that a lot of the thing, though, for horror? Yeah, uh, it's is to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but he makes a comment, like, the display doesn't reflect um, his family's personal beliefs, but, like, they just do it for fun. Um, some of his neighbors <laughs> called the police because this year um, <laughs> they were shocked by the display, which per- depicts a beheaded Jesus flanked by a nun and priest, and, G- and um, Satan is holding Jesus' head. So I can see, <laughs> actually, no, that is that is wonderful, because I can see exactly what they're going for there. It's a uh, representation of how the church itself has destroyed the teachings of Jesus. Yeah. Like, so, that's, that's what it is. Um, some residents are calling appalling and blasphemy, um, and they want it obviously taken down. Um, they're like, the residents are like, we understand it's freedom of speech, and that's what we're in this country for, but, like, they don't like well, the I... display. Um, code enforcement showed up to their house and, like, looked around, and they were like, we're not aware of any local ordinances that specifically addresses this type of situation. However, this display, this neighbor display is clearly offensive. It's certainly not in the spirit of a family-friendly Halloween. Um, but then his neighbor says, I don't see where anything's wrong with this. Every year he goes overboard, so... Yeah. Like, some people are going to like it or not. I don't see anything wrong with it, personally. Uh, said it's, it's a very meaningful and powerful message. Um... Yes. And I I appreciate that. You can kind of see it in, like, the thumbnail. The... Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's I, I get it, because, I mean, you know, there's a, you know me, and it, my taste in music is... Uh, yes. <laughs> shitty at questionable times. Uh, but there's a song, there's a punk song, that says, God's not dead, but you're killing him slowly. Uh, no corporate... What is it? No corporate religion is going to make you holy because that's that's what America has done to Christianity and what it's become. I mean, Christianity's always been problematic to those of us who are non-Christian. Yes. Uh, to women, to queer people, and it's it's always going to be that way. If, in my opinion, just because if one that was the foundations yeah. and they refuse to admit it. But the longer they, you know, latch on to, you know, some of these quote-unquote traditional beliefs that aren't traditional beliefs, because if no. you look at old Christian beliefs, they were a lot more in line with a lot of, like, pagan beliefs and then yes. a lot of, you know, uh, Jewish mysticism and stuff like that, Hermeticism. Uh, you know, it's... You're going to have that, and until you address the issues, it's... It's going to continue to become more and more crap, or continue to be crap. Yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, no, I, I saw that in giggles. <laughs> so I, <laughs> like, really? You're? I mean, I understand why you're mad, but like, really? So I did watch a show. First off, I finally finished the second season of Good Omens. I've been pushing it off. Um, it was enjoyable. Okay. Uh, you know, it was uh, written from notes that. Uh, Sir Terry Pratchett had written down and had down stuff that he and Neil Gaiman had discussed. 
Yeah. I do have an issue with something in it, and I get that it's like fan service I don't know the notes that they had written down, so I don't know if this was part of that, but they did a whole, this was a big fan service with, uh, you know, spoiler here for season two, uh, to skip ahead like a minute or so. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, people constantly shipped Aziraphil and Crowley as a couple, that's the demon and the angel, or angel and demon respectively, don't want to go on how I listed the names, but people always shifted them, so they had like more of a, you know, they had like a long like best friend vibe thing going on through the book and everything else, and I could see how there was like some, you could see some like sexual bonding between them, or like some kind of romantic something or another, and they kind of plugged it a little bit more in the second season, and then, you know, they kissed, or well, Crowley kissed Aziraphale, and Aziraphale was like, the fuck just happened? Yeah. And Crowley's like, all right, peace, and left, because he's dealing with his own shit, uh, and there's like, you know, for storyline purposes, I'm not going to go any further, because I said a minute, I think we're over a minute now. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> but, yeah, so, it's, I don't get I why they did it, they I, I understand, but every story does not need romance. Uh, That's a true statement. Like, it's, it, romance is fine. Everyone, you know, if you have a calling to fall in love with someone or be with someone, you know, fully support it. Yeah. Every story does not require that. This is correct. Yes. I mean, Lord of the Rings, you're a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Yes. You know, while some people may have seen, I'm sure there's all kinds of fun ships out there. <laughs> oh. You know, like Frodo and Sam or, you know. Legolas and Gimli. Really? Yes. I just, that's a, that's a whole but thing. a lot of Frodo and Sam. And obviously Gimli's the top. Yes. In that one. Because that's just funny. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, actually, I don't, I don't know, because like size-wise, that would be funny. But as far as other aesthetics, it would be funnier if he was. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> my brain's going a mile a minute now with that one. However, uh, yes, every story does not need romance. Well, That's... like when Peter Jackson with the Hobbit movies put in. The female uh, elf. Yeah. That isn't in the book. That line, that's what makes me more mad than anything. It's not necessarily that she's in the movie. And I understand that Peter Jackson, they wanted that. I understand. But it's like, it makes me more mad that Feely and Keely die. They don't die with the honor that they have in the book. Yeah. Because they all die heroically and it's like you're taking that away from the character to me that's what made me more mad about the last hobbit movies is yeah okay you can have that love interest but like they still deserve to die heroically like they did in the right. books and it's just like that's i'm just like god damn it i know why you did it but like fuck you <laughs> so <laughs> like, you know me i'll i'll reference one piece whenever i can just like this world <laughs> So this world, for example, the majority of the characters in this world, while some of them may have like a love interest at some point, or yeah. you know that's not the like a big driving thing in it, and you have like a character, it's like oh hey they got married like in between books, yeah, like okay you know that's he's got a wife now cool that's thing. yeah One Piece the reason why One Piece has been so successful why it's so loved by so many people why it's the highest grossing you know comic book graphic novel series in the world is because that's not the point of the series. Yeah. Um, you know, the creator of One Piece said that he never has the intention during the series, he may after the series at the very end, but does not have the intention to create romantic uh, yeah. entanglement between the main character or like the main characters on the ship. Yeah. That's something he doesn't want. He actually, I was... Uh, watching this thing the other day where they were talking about like some of the filming and stuff he made it very clear yeah that he didn't want any kind of romance from any of the cast yeah like because that's he not, didn't want like that to affect any of the yeah, other that's story. not part of the storyline exactly like that's what like there are romance books for that reason yeah. like if that's what you want to read then go read that and go produce that but that's not 
yeah. what we want. Yeah. That's what a lot of us don't want. I mean, obviously, you have the romantic character who's just like you know over women or the you know the trope of the over per- like the pervy character. Um, yeah. But you know, and you'll have like characters that have a thing for you know the main character, yeah. like with One Piece. You know, you have uh, Boa Hancock, who is a, another pirate who has this huge thing for Luffy, the main character. Uh, he's completely clueless because yeah. that's his personality, and he has a goal that he wants to be king of the pirates. So he's going after that. He doesn't yeah. care if a woman's chasing after him or yeah. a kid. And there's other women who are just like, oh, this guy, he's awesome, he's cute, he's hot, Please. he's you know fun. <laughs> he's just like, we're friends, hey. <laughs> Over the head. And it's, uh, well, and that, and it's, there's that belief that, you know, Luffy's ace. Like, there, okay, there that, is would, a, make there a, is that a, would make some sense. There's a thought there that, you know, he's ace and he values friendship. Um, but there's also the thought that he's autistic and just can't pick up on things. So that's... A... Okay, I can see both. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can, I can see both. Yeah, so romance is not necessary for a story. No, it does uh, not. So I randomly clicked on a show because I needed something <laughs> dumb to watch. And, oh boy, this was... Oof. Yeah? Was it bad? Uh, well, it's... <laughs> it was a thing. It was a thing I watched. Oh, God. Um, oh, no. Obviously, you know, we give the, you know, explicit warning or we're labeled as explicit for language and other some of our other topics... Yes. This show fits explicit very well. <laughs> uh, so the show is on Netflix. It's called uh, Farzar. Okay. And it is, it's like Rick and Morty level of oh. weirdness, obscurity. Apparently, uh, one of the joke runners uh, worked a little bit on Rick and Morty, but also made. A different show. I think it's like Black Buckleberry or something. Something with a bear. Or it's some kind of weird. Uh, some kind of weird other show. But anyways, it's about a the main character. Okay. Is uh, the son of a king who was a great warrior, quote unquote. And basically these people went to this, they settled on this planet because in this universe humans have settled a bunch of other planets and they pretty much subjugated the alien race, which are weird, freaky monsters. Okay. And, oh, I do have, speaking of monsters, I do have another thing I watched, uh, <laughs> which is actually worth talking about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, it's like the stupid comedy thing where he finds out that, hey, my dad's kind of evil and a jackass and <laughs> so you know he both and he's a complete idiot as well but it's it's full of all sorts of weird dumb stuff if you like Rick and Morty you would enjoy this show and there's literally no other audience that would enjoy this show and that's that's really all I can say about it okay uh, the thing that I the other thing that I watched that I highly recommend is called Sweet Home it is a Korean dark fantasy horror drama type show uh, where people, based off their desires, start turning into monsters. And so there's people in an apartment complex that are trying to fight to survive uh, because if you make it so long without turning into a monster after this whole thing started, after you start showing side effects, that something special is supposed to happen. Uh, if you can resist fully turning into that monster... Uh, the monster designs are phenomenally cool. Okay. So the show itself is based off a webtoon comic series. Okay. By the same name, and I believe it wrapped up. I'm going to take it and I'm going to have to read it. But yeah, the monster design on some of the monsters are so freaking cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend the show. I can't recommend the comic. I haven't read it yet, but people that I know that have read the comics said that the comics don't even hold a candle to the show. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. But that's... So you think that's all I've got? Yeah, that's all I've got, too. Yeah. So... That wraps this up. Yeah. 
<laughs> so until next time. Uh, well, it was, hold on. We got other stuff to do. Well, yeah. As always, please <laughs> rate, review, and subscribe. Please tell a friend. I'm sorry that we're no longer on Stitcher. That fucking pisses me off, too. And if you have a book recommendation. Hey, hey, hey. Cut it with the fucking language. Right? <laughs> <laughs> If you have a book recommendation or a topic recommendation, you can email us at the Weaver Dragons at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And as always, like, rate, you <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> so it's, we did like wedding things before we were <laughs> us. We were going to do this last night, and I think both our brains were kind of fried for the day. <laughs> yes, so, that's true. So we apologize, and if you listened to last week's episode, since we record these in reverse, we haven't recorded that yet, I'm sure it's going to be even worse than this. (laughs) So enjoy the uh, shit show. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Until next time, I'm Johnny. And I'm Kelsey. Bye. Bye.